Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're talking about masculine health. Five tips for men to become and to feel more manly. So the reason I make this video is because a lot of different typologists and personality experts have done their attempts to try to explain what masculinity and femininity is. However, what I find is most of them miss the mark completely. Actually, they use masculinity and femininity to discuss whatever that they feel is interesting, but most of the time they end up missing the question of gender and sexual identity completely. It's in fact unclear to me what most of these definitions have to do with manliness or womanliness. Before we start with the video, I want to send a thank you to all my patrons and supporters. It's thanks to, to their support that I'm able to make videos like this, so thank you so much for that. So let's get on with the video. Tip number one, find out what masculinity or manliness means to you. What you'll find is in most cultures, the definition of manliness or masculinity will vary. And for example, in Scandinavia, it's most common to think of a man or a manly person as somebody that is a bit more introverted or reserved, while, for example, in the Netherlands, I find that the typical man is said to be and described as more extroverted. So you'll find that uh, opinions on what manliness is will vary from person to person and culture to culture. So what you want to do is you want to find out what manliness means to you. What does it mean to be masculine for you and how do you embody and capture masculinity? What I've found is masculinity is most important when we try to explain what we find attractive about other people and about ourselves. Basically, a person that feels manly and a man that feels manly feels attractive, feels that they have a healthy sexual identity, feels that they are embodied and captured in their own body and sexuality and gendered expression. And that's usually a good thing. If you feel that you are in touch with your masculinity and with your masculine identity, and if you feel that you're attractive and if you feel like you are uh, in touch with your sexual identity, that's generally a good thing. So that's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to feel bad about. It's good and it's healthy to feel that you are in touch with yourself and your body. And with, of course, with your sexuality, you are a sexual person, just like most people. Make a list, write down things that you find to be attractive about yourself, things that you make you feel attractive to others, things that you do that make you feel like you are in touch with yourself and with your sexuality, <laughs> things that make you feel competent. Most of these things will have to do with dating, like things you do on dates, things you do around women, things you do uh, for yourself, like working out, or for example, uh, things that make you feel in touch with your body. So you'll find that these things are things you wanna focus on. So that's rule number two. Do things that make you feel more manly. That means when you know what kind of things you find make you feel better about yourself and masculinity is, well, then do those things. Try to set aside time every day to engage in those things. Make sure that uh, you take time to embody and to have time and options and opportunities to express those uh, with your partner, significant other, or on dates, or at work, or in, at the gym, or wherever you go. Find things to do that make you feel like you're an attractive and uh, manly person. And uh, that, yeah, that's a great thing. Like, that's just uh, something that's going to make you feel like you're basically, yeah, just radiating uh, your own version of strength and manliness. Tip number three is uh, find out what is attractive to you. That means uh, what kind of things are you drawn to in other people? What kind of things make you feel attracted to others? And what kind of things tend to attract you? What kind of things do you, uh, how would you describe your ideal woman? Or if you are heterosexual in that sense, what kind of things would make you uh, feel like somebody is hot? <laughs> Have a grasp of those things. Like what kind of things tend to get you interested or hooked in a person? And what you want to do is you want to detach yourself a bit from conventional attractiveness. Of course, you can rate people's attractiveness and sexual appeal on an objective scale based on cultural notions and things like that. But what you want to do is you want to create a personal list of things that are attractive to you personally. So get away from the, oh, I want somebody that is uh, tall, slim, uh, uh, has a symmetrical face. I want you to get down really to, okay, what kind of people have I dated in the past? What kind of people have, do I tend to fall for? What kind of people tend to uh, get me hooked early? What, when, when have I felt the most 
instant and most direct attraction to another person. What did they do? What did they talk about? What was it that made them interesting to me? What kind of things really pulled me in? Know those things and understand those things because, yeah, if you don't know those things, they're going to unconsciously wrap you in and you're not even going to know. True it is, most men are clueless about what they want and when they are interested in another person. Maybe you're crushing on somebody right now and you have no idea. <laughs> a lot of time, uh, guys don't even know when a woman is showing interest in them. A lot of time, uh, guys guys don't even have a clue what they find interesting. Similarly, if you're not straight, of course, you can still have a concept of what's attractive to you and you should still try to get the list of those things. So, of course, take your time to describe what kind of things make you feel attracted to another man in that case. And, of course, uh, think about just what make you, makes, makes you feel, <laughs> what kind of guys do you tend to fall for. So, yeah, um, this is a healthy exercise for anybody, regardless if they're straight or <laughs> bi or whatever they are. Tip number four is have a healthy relationship to your sexuality. Find healthy strategies to express your sexuality and interest in other people. Sometimes I find men tend to be afraid to show interest in girls. Uh, and I find that we're playing kind of uh, rat and mouse with one another. And typically that's the strategy of failure. We thought that if we reveal our cards or if we play with open cards in a relationship or when dating another person, we become more boring or... <laughs> less and more easy to another person that makes us afraid of rejection but often girls actually find it attractive when a man is able to show interest in them and so if you're able to say boldly and assertively that uh, another person is attractive to you or that you're interested in another person or that you like another person or that you like something in particular about another person, don't be afraid to say that. And to say that while making eye contact with them and while smiling and while saying, hey, that's something that you do that I find really hot. You know, like those kind of things are like, just, yeah, uh, there is nothing wrong with that. Just uh, learn to be okay with expressing when you find something interesting about another person. And yeah, of course, if they're not comfortable with that, of course, you can always say, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to say that. And yeah, you just uh, learn boundaries over time. A lot of time, the best way to discover boundaries is to break boundaries. That means, uh, yeah, ask questions. Uh, can I kiss you uh, right now? Like, that's actually not a bad question. Uh, learning to find healthy ways to express that you're interested in another person in an open and uh, unintrusive manner is very positive. And of course, you want to tune yourself in to the other person. And that's rule number five. Have a healthy relationship with the other sex or with the same sex, depending on your sexuality. Have a healthy relationship with them. Like, attune yourself to their needs. Know what they find attractive. Ask them what kind of things make them interested in you. What kind of things uh, get them going. What kind of things to make them feel something. Uh, be fine to talk about, you know, what was your, what kind of people do you tend to fall for? What kind of things tend to make you instantly attracted to somebody? Get those questions out of the way and take your time to tune yourself into that person. Oh, they are interested in this, or oh, they like that, or oh, they care about that. All those things are ways to just make you feel like, hey, I'm attuned to this person. I know their needs and I know that I can be and provide the things that they need. So by knowing their needs, you can provide their needs. If you don't know your, their needs, you're gonna find yourself guessing and doing things that they don't like, and you're gonna find yourself putting an effort, the wrong kind of effort, and you know you need your GPS. So you need to make sure you know the map, <laughs> you, know, you need to know what kind of things to do to make yourself yeah, attracted to somebody. And now, my final advice is, remember it's a practice of trial and error, that means, Typically, you want to go on a lot of dates or you want to go uh, take your time to give another person a chance. You might not feel an instant spark with somebody, but through consistent effort and through consistent uh, practice, you're going to find it easier and easier to fall in love with another person. And sometimes it's going to be super instantaneous and sometimes it's going to be uh, a slow, gradual process. You might find yourself starting out as friends and eventually becoming something more, or you might find yourself starting out hot and heavy and... <laughs> then fizzling out and then uh, you can no matter what you might find your way to build your way back so what was it you did right and what kind of things don't work what kind of things uh, work for you and what kind of things work for the other person that's just the practice of trial and error there is no other way to find it out than to go and talk to other people and to find ways to engage with them in a way that is fun for you and for them finally i'd say avoid just spreading yourself too thin. Try to prioritize 
uh, limit yourself to a set amount of people at the same time. Uh, because typically you'll get more value from having more in-depth connections with somebody and getting to know somebody more depth deeply than by spreading yourself too thin. Most of the time, we're not going to find ourselves feeling a spark with somebody we met out of Tinder on the first date. Most of the time, you're not going to find yourself instantly attracted to somebody the first time you see them. Actually, a lot of the time, it's, uh, building up attraction or interest in another person takes time. It's discovering their vulnerabilities, it's discovering who they are, it's getting them to open up about themselves and to feel comfortable opening up about themselves. So, uh, don't... Uh, judge people out too quickly. We are caught in this red flag culture where we're looking for quick and instant connections that feel instantly good and instantly great. But most of the time, that's kind of difficult because we're playing ca a game of rat and mouse with one another. We're not playing open cards. We don't know what the other person wants. They don't know what we want. And so we are not able to provide or be what they need and they are not able to be what we need. So if you find yourself jumping from partner to partner, never feeling happy or satisfied with anything or never finding a way to find long or lasting relationships, yeah, uh, maybe see if there's ways to make sure that you can take time to really attune yourself into another person and uh, don't give up too easily. So those are my tips for men to feel comfortable in their masculinity. I hope this video helped you feel better about yourself as a man and I hope that, yeah, you're gonna find yourself feeling comfortable about your sexual expression and, yeah, what you are and what you do. And of course, yeah, don't be afraid or don't get too confused because, yeah, there's other guys that are gonna have a different way to express themselves and you have your way to express yourself. The important way is you find a strategy and a way to be that works for you. That's my most important advice. Best of luck and... Take care.